What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Well, the word is Juan Dixon, husband of Robin Dixon, a real housewife of Potomac, is embroiled in a very controversial lawsuit. And I didn't know about it until TikTok told me. So when I heard about this on TikTok, I had to go do my own research. And boy, oh boy, this is a doozy. So it all began with a young man by the name of Ibn Williams, IBN Williams. Ibn Williams was a student at Coppin University in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, Coppin University is where Juan Dixon is a head coach of the men's basketball team and Ibn Williams was a member of that team. So at some point, Ibn Williams strikes a relationship online with a young lady and things got hot and heavy between them to the point where the young lady was requesting nude photos from Mr. Williams. So Mr. Williams went ahead and obliged her request and started sending nude photos of himself to this young lady online. This relationship took place strictly online, never on the phone, never in person, everything, all forms of communication was happening online. So she begins demanding more and more pictures. And when he doesn't send them, she begins to threaten him with exposing the pictures that she already had of him. Now he's there on scholarship and he didn't want to lose his scholarship and get involved in a nude photo controversy. So he went ahead and started sending her more pictures. So soon after one of his teammates by the name of Lucian Brownlee, at some point, these two young men are having a conversation and Lucian Brownlee informs Ibn Williams that the same thing has been happening to him, that he struck up a relationship with this young lady online and she began demanding nude photos of him as well. So at this point, this online blackmailer um, tells Ibn Williams that they want Ibn Williams to engage in a sexual encounter with Lucian Brownlee. Williams resisted this. So when he resisted, he started receiving like constant threats um, in the fall, around the fall of 2019. So around this time, his teammate Lucian Brownlee graduates from college and becomes a member of the coaching staff at Coppin University. So now Lucian Brownlee is Mr. Ibn Williams's basketball coach as well, or one of his basketball coaches. The online blackmailer continues to demand that Williams engage in a encounter with Lucian Brownlee and the threats get worse and worse. So Ibn Williams believes that the only way for him to protect his scholarship, to protect his position on the team and to keep everything top secret is to go ahead and give the blackmailer what they want, which is for him and Lucian Brownlee, who is now his coach for him and Brownlee to engage in a sexual encounter on video to record this encounter and send it to them. So Ibn Williams, he actually acquiesced and he actually did this. So at some point, he tells uh, his coach, Juan Dixon, what's been happening. According to Ibn Williams, Juan Dixon just kind of brushed it off and had made mention about something about how he probably should never had hired Mr. Brownlee because he knew that Mr. Brownlee had some mental health issues. So... Mr. Ibn Williams gets no help from Juan Dixon, gets no help from the university. I think he went to some other higher ups the university. No one was really wanting to listen to him. I guess to make him go away, they began an internal investigation. When the university did their investigation, Mr. Ibn Williams felt like he was being victimized all over again. It, he felt like he was being blamed for bringing, you know, negative negativity to the school. Nobody was taking him seriously. They're treating him as if he was the culprit and not the victim. Um, they would interrogate him with some very invasive questions, like asking him about his orientation, asking him about who he's been with in the past, etc. So he felt even more violated. So at some point he ends up following a lawsuit. So when he files the lawsuit with his attorney, they filed the lawsuit against the University of Maryland. They filed the lawsuit against 
the University System of Maryland, the State of Maryland, and three school officials. And I'm pretty sure out of those three school officials, one of them is Lucian Brownlee and the other one is Juan Dixon. And the reason, obviously, we know why he's suing Lucian Brownlee. He believes that Lucian Brownlee was the catfisher, the one who was portraying as this female online. And Lucian Brownlee, he's actually denying that. He's saying that he's a victim as well of this unknown, mysterious um, internet blackmailer that that's not him he doesn't know who this person is but he also fell into the trap of this online tormentor Juan Dixon is obviously being sued because according to the lawsuit that Ibn Williams filed Juan Dixon had a duty to not hire someone who could possibly be a danger to the students and or athletes uh, not student and or to the students and athletes of Coppin University uh, because People are alleging, the lawsuit alleges that Juan Dixon had stated that he knew Mr. Brownlee had a mental health issue, but hired him anyway. Also, the lawsuit alleges the reason why he's suing the university is because he says that the, the university had promised to ensure a safe environment for its students. And it was anything but safe for Mr. Williams. He says that, you know, he was assaulted. He calls his encounter to his encounter with Mr. Brownlee as a sexual assault. So he says he was, you know, assaulted. He was made to not feel safe. He was being threatened. He was being blackmailed. Um, he was in constant fear of being exposed, constant fear of losing his scholarship, all of that. So this lawsuit is still pending and um, it's extremely interesting. And it's also a little bit baffling how people can succumb to the demands of someone that you've never seen you've never spoke to them you don't know who they are but they're demanding you to do these extreme things these extreme acts and you feel this pressure of doing it for example okay you don't know this person online but they're requesting for you to send them nude photos and you're doing it now i can understand people who are a lot younger and don't know that they have options and don't know that they can say no and they have a tendency to believe everything that goes on online like if it's a young teenager and the person threatening them threatening them is saying to them i'm going to tell your mom i'm going to tell everybody at your school that you've been doing this that i can understand but I mean, we're talking about two young, we're talking about a young man, Mr. Ibn Williams, you know, a college age student who unfortunately, you know, I don't know, fell victim to this online catfisher. And it's just amazing that it, it went as far as it did to the point where this mysterious figure told him, well, you need to engage in a physical encounter with Lucian Brownlee, or I'm going to expose you. And he went ahead and he did it. And so I just don't know how this lawsuit is going to, is going to get resolved. It's just bizarre. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. I'm leaning towards it not being true because I'm pretty sure what's going to end up happening is that the university is going to settle with this guy. Um, by the way, he did end up leaving Coppin University and he is now attending, if he's still in school, he's now attending or has graduated from Morehouse, Morehouse College. So there's a rumor circulating. I don't know how true it is. I, I'm not putting a lot of weight in it that because of this lawsuit, uh, Robin Dixon is going to be exiting from the Real Housewives of Potomac. I kind of don't think so because I think they're going to want to make this story go away. And so I think they're just going to throw however much money this guy's requesting just to shut him up, make him go away so they can go about their regularly scheduled business. So yeah, I saw this story on TikTok and I was like, there is no way. There's no way. And the reason why it was so unbelievable to me was because there was another story that ended up being a Netflix documentary and it was called The Girlfriend Who Never Existed. And it was a story of Manti Teo. And I watched that documentary. And in that documentary, Manti Teo was a football player who was being catfished by somebody online. And if I can remember correctly, that story blew up because his girlfriend, this online girlfriend that everybody knew about like his team, his teammates, his family, friends, everybody knew that Manti Teo was carrying on this relationship with this online female and that this relationship was really, really serious, but it only took place online. Um, I think they, no, I, I take that back. I think they spoke on the phone or something. 
I'm not exactly sure. They may have spoken on the phone, but there was never anything going on in person. Everything was happening online. And he was this rising star football player. I forgot he played for um, some school in California. I don't know if it was UCLA, one of those really big schools in California. So he played for this really big school in California. He was like this rising star. Um, he was the, the man on campus, right? And then something happened where his girlfriend ended up dying in a car accident. This online girlfriend ended up dying in a car accident. And around the same time, his grandmother passed away. So it was like, you know, people's hearts were broken because, you know, our star football player lost his girlfriend and lost his grandmother all within like a week of each other, like really close together, these deaths occurred. So everybody was feeling so sorry for him because he was like the hero of this particular school. And this was also during the time of the draft, I think. And so he ended up being chosen for he ended up being picked for the NFL. I forgot what team he played for. It could have been the Chargers. I'm not sure. But he ends up playing for the NFL. And then the story was exposed that this girlfriend was fake. She never died. And because this relationship had gone on for so long, I think it went on to the entirety of his college career. And so when the story got exposed, he got into trouble and people were like, the only reason why you even got drafted was because you had this, you know, sob story about your girlfriend and your grandmother dying at the same time. And that probably helped propel you either to get drafted or to get chosen for the Heisman Trophy. I forgot. I think it was for the Heisman. Was it the Heisman Trophy? He got some type of accolade and whatever accolade he got, either being drafted or getting the trophy People were like, well, you only got that because everybody was feeling sorry for you because you're going through this tragedy, even though he was a really talented player. And that's how that story blew up. And so he was seen as like, you know, how dare you make up the story that your girlfriend died in the same week that your grandmother died just to garner sympathy so that people can want to either vote for you or draft you or whatever. He claimed he never knew that he was being catfished. He never knew that this person was fake. He claimed that he was a victim as well and that he never knew. And when you read these stories about these catfishing incidents and how they go on and on and on and how the person on the other side is being made to do all of these crazy things, you begin to wonder, Did you know, are you in cahoots? Are you in cahoots with, with this catfisher, the so-called catfisher? Like is Ibn Williams and Lucian Brownlee, are they in cahoots to try to sue the university and get money out of them or what? Because the story is so bizarre and especially with how the younger generations are so technologically savvy, like what person, what young person in this day and age is going to fall for the okie doke and be involved in a relationship with somebody online sight unseen and like there's no proof that this person exists and that you don't ask any questions you don't want to take them out you don't want to ask them you know just catfishing was something that was going on like in the 2000s right when internet when the internet was really really young we can that i can kind of understand you know in the early 2000s or whenever the internet got really popular People were being catfished left and right because we just didn't know any better. But it's like now it's 2022, 2023, 2018, 2019. And the young people are supposed to know all the ins and outs of technology. Like you never wanted to take her out. You never wanted to meet her, you know, fly her down or fly to wherever the hell she's at or talk to her on the telephone or FaceTime. I forgot about that. Or FaceTime one another. You never requested to FaceTime. Now it could have been a very integral type of plan where maybe the blackmailer or the tormentor, the catfisher could have paid a female to FaceTime him. I don't know because I just find it hard to believe that even Williams was not requesting more than just communicating online. Like I said, he never reported this incident to the police. He should have because for someone to coerce, coerce you into a sexual act, that is, you know, that's criminal. So I'm not sure why he didn't report that to the police, but I think he really should have reported that to the police because he was being blackmailed. He was being threatened, you know, I don't know. But uh, Juan Dixon is involved in that story. It's absolutely bizarre. 
this right here should also be made into a documentary like for real if mr ibn williams does not get enough money from his lawsuit or doesn't get any money from his lawsuit he should consider selling the story to netflix because this is absolutely bizarre anyways thank you so much for joining me i really do appreciate it i know it was kind of confusing it was all over the place and i hope that i was um i i made it you know, as clear as I possibly could, but it, it is kind of complicated, but thank you so much. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Do not forget to rate the video. If you like this content, go ahead and subscribe and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.